do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Do not go gentle into that good night. Hello everyone, it's me, it's Head King, and welcome back to another second part of Guts and Black Powder. So today, we got a lot to talk about, so let's just get right into it. And also, my sprites have changed. Like the evolution, I'm even spookier. I don't know how to transition from that, so we're just gonna move on. But to make it clear, the zombies are caused because they are people who have passed that have gone to neither heaven nor hell. Christianity is also essentially the one true religion in this world, and the zombies are people who passed who are going to hell, but because hell is quite literally full, they can't. So now they're forced to forever roam the earth as zombies. This is why the priests can temporarily stun them with the crucifix, as the image of God is kind of seen as a holy image, and hence they can't bear the sight of seeing it. This is also why priests don't actually turn into zombies, and why they can bless those who are infected, alleviating them from the blight should they be close to turning. Another bit on the lore is that canonically, the Ottoman Empire has collapsed, and it's pretty telling that all nations that aren't Christian are in essence screwed. So to those in the comments that wondered if other religions could alleviate the blight, well, they can't. This also means that continents like Africa, Asia, and portions of Oce Oceania are in essence screwed, as any infection will guarantee the majority of the population will turn and will likely overrun any country there, and will then later on overrun the continent, causing everybody or most people to turn into a zombie now with mentioning the Ottoman empire as well as the fact of the matter that everyone's basically screwed let's get into the lore dump that was the hugemont newspaper i'm gonna be a little bit all over the place so just try and keep up there's a newspaper in the hugemont endless map that reveals more about the world's events with it being dated june 5th 1815 it's fairly old by the events of Hugemont, as it's 13 days before, but it's still fairly telling as, as to how the world is faring. So let's get into it. The first headline that we typically see is peace under unpleasing circumstances, and it mostly pertains to how the coalition and France have reached a peace after the ceasefire of 1813, which is after the events of Leipzig. It also brings up Russia, Sweden, Denmark, Norway, and Austria, and talks about what is occurring with them. With the first three, they're, uh, they're not doing so hot, as their communications have been dead silent for months, and it's likely that they have been likely overrun, with Russia likely losing its European holdings, rather going to its eastern sections instead. Austria is getting invaded, and in the short, they're not making it. We also read that Britain quickly evacuated from Spain, as we feared the war had been lost. This is likely mentioned to the Peninsula War, and the war was likely lost as a zombie infection may have overrun Spain, or most of Spain at least, with the infection likely being in the north of Spain, which I'll talk about later. Lastly, more regulations are being placed on trade between England and mainland Europe, as luckily, England seems to be a safe haven with no cases of blight yet. However, that seems to be changing as another headline reads, Ship Quarantine Over Dover. A ship was quarantined in Dover that had blight. There's only a mention that it says on page 2, but we can't really read page 2. This does bring up, however, that it's likely that England would no longer be a safe haven for much longer. Uh, the ship in question could be a reference to the HMS Undaunted, considering that the events of San Sebastian. There is another article written by Robert Smith that mentions what happens after the escape of, of, of San Sebastian, wherein they get on the HMS Undaunted. However, one of their men became infected and ripped into the captain. It later states the road back to shore, implying the small boat they took to the HMS Undaunted, uh, which is also the small boat that likely took us out of San Sebastian in the objective mode, was the same one that they just took back to Spain, wherein they found some Spanish guerrillas who helped them get out of Spain. This does imply that the HMS Undaunted was likely overrun and potentially was sheared back to the United Kingdom, perhaps for repairs or perhaps to get people with blight to just be eliminated so that way the boat could still be intact and could still be used despite the fact that the crew and perhaps the zombies would probably be quarantined it's kind of a gamble we never really learn what this boat really is my theory is just that it's the hms undaunted the events that is mentioned by robert smith however also mentions vitoria which is a city south of san sebastian in the basque country of spain 
This would make sense given there is yet another article that lists names of missing soldiers that went missing in both San Sebastian and Vitoria, which just makes this all connect like a puzzle, to be honest. So basically, covering all three articles, they tell a pretty continuous story wherein Robert Smith in the 5th Division of the British Army fought the French Army in Vitoria, who escaped to San Sebastian. The French army in San Sebastián captured Robert Smith and his 5th Division, and then you cue the events of San Sebastián. They later got on the HMS Undaunted, got somebody infected, and it likely got taken back to the UK with the remaining crew gearing it back to the UK. With Robert Smith and the remaining survivors coming back to Spain, got out, and then there's just a missing, pe a missing list of people who are, in, who are just missing from the whole battle. It's pretty in-depth, and honestly, these three articles are pretty good at world-building. And considering Robert Smith is in England and alive, I wonder if he'll be more of a person of significance in the lore, just like someone else who stars in the British newspaper being James Bankman. James Bankman is, in, is the voice of reason, and in his article, he lambasts the people of the United Kingdom who, do, who don't care about the blight, and wishes for people to know the truth and then hear the reality of what is actually occurring. This cry for acknowledging the blight does come from the fact that many in the United Kingdom have zero clue of what's actually going on. In another article, British Army mobilizes to aid her allies, we read that Duke Wellington told the public that the blight was a disease, not something that made people into man-eating freaks, with the public taking the disease part literally believing that their soldiers are just gonna be like nurses in the hospital essentially trying to heal these man-eating freaks or these sick people when in reality they're just zombies and there's no healing them however part of this article also does have an anonymous tip given by someone who mentions um, something that would basically contradict the whole disease part that they mentioned by uh, Duke of, by the Duke of Wellington which states the English forces are to march to the south of Brussels. There they will meet Blucher and his men, but up at most shockingly, Napoleon Bonaparte and his forces will attend with them. From there, the armies will tear through the plague and liberate Europe. As we know by the events of the game, the three endless maps are the result of this liberation, with so much wrong in this little line, in this anonymous tip. Blucher is dead by, the, by this point. He dies in the events of Cobb, which occurs before the endless maps, meaning that this tip is already outdated. The Prussian army, as well, is not actually present in one of the endless maps. Despite the fact that they are in two of the others, the fact that they are missing in one, as well as, like I mentioned in the last video, the whole chain of command kind of falls apart, really does go to show that the men that were from the Prussian army could have likely been more just stragglers that came along rather than actual soldiers that were sent by Prussia. But that's just a theory of mine, mainly because you know, for the most part, the ones that would have been in higher attendance would have been the British and the French. The Prussians likely would have been a smaller force. It also mentions Napoleon, which we've we never seen Napoleon. In the VIP servers, you can't actually become an emperor and you can become Napoleon, but never in the actual base game can you actually be an emperor. So as to how credible the whole Napoleon Bonaparte and his forces will attend uh, Blucher and his men in the south of Brussels is completely questionable. If Napoleon does come, it's likely that he would have been there and might not have made it. Or maybe, much like in our timeline with, I believe, Waterloo, he fled to fight on the, he fled the battle to live another day as in our timeline because waterloo is an actual map in this timeline we could assume that perhaps napoleon and his army were fighting and very similar to in our timeline wherein they lost waterloo napoleon was very close to actually being captured but still fled and he fled to france it's likely that 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 those events would have been replicated perhaps in the Waterloo, but that's just the theory. What is a guarantee, however, is that the British public are still completely unaware of what the plague actually is, and this is breeding restlessness and ignorance by them, leading to an apathetic attitude towards the events of mainland Europe, as mainland Europe slowly succumbs to the blight. However, 
because the United Kingdom is putting stricter and stricter regulations on the trade with mainland Europe, it is leaving them with a little bite in their wallet, you know, just a little bit of economic damage, which would also increase the restlessness. Yet, they still have an ally on the other side of the world, the US. On the other side of the continent, the US is coming to the aid of Britain, as despite the ignorance, ignorance and restlessness of the British public, the US begins to trade with the UK, fish and lumber, as we hear that the United Kingdom is losing money and supplies due to aiding her allies in mainland Europe. This is only months after the War of 1812, which considering uh, it's mentioned that it's, that the blood still runs red from what occurred a few months ago. It's like oh, the war ended in 1815, which is the exact same as in our timeline, with both countries having been economically devastated from that war. The United Kingdom and the United States now, they seek trade in a more peaceful relationship because of that need for trade, as in, as in this timeline, because the United because the US no longer really has a bunch of trading partners, the United Kingdom is basically the only person they can trade with. This is another article in the newspaper, but I'm going to, I kept it brief because I also wanted to mention uh, the map everyone kept asking me in the comment section to cover being the Sleepy Hollows map. It's not canon, but it does take place in the United States, giving us insight that the blight can occur anywhere, as I mentioned well before in the beginning of this video, not just in Europe. It also does show that the main force potentially battling the blight in the United States might be the Marines, which Man, they're gonna have a hell of a time. But the articles now being out of the way, and yeah, that's mainly all the articles, and some theories surrounding the events, I do want to mention what is actually going to occur outside of just Europe and the United States. I do want to first mention to Russia, because Russia is a very interesting case. Russia is essentially screwed, even though I did say that they're going to go to their eastern territories, which are more remote and colder. Yet China, in this time, is not really Christian. And as I mentioned, because they're not really Christian, any nation that is essentially not a Christian nation is guaranteed to basically have all their population, that isn't Christian of course, to basically become zombies. Essentially means that China is guaranteed to fall should the blight reach a densely populated city like Beijing. The bigger guarantee is just that China is going to collapse due to the zombie apocalypse, and the rest of Russia will probably as well, as it will eventually bleed into the eastern sector of Russia. Another mention is that Spain is likely slowly collapsing with the north, like I stated, being overrun by zombies, leaving only the southern regions and likely the regions bordering Portugal being the only safe places in Spain. In the entirety of mainland Europe, the only safe places now could honestly be Switzerland, which is called the Helvetic Republic in this time, and the Italian nations, as they have defensive mountains in the north with the Alps protecting Italy and the Alps protecting all of Switzerland, and the Mediterranean Ocean surrounding Italy. For Switzerland, it just makes it, the Alps basically make it an impenetrable fortress, so I'd honestly consider it safe for now, so long as they are able to keep their population afloat, and so long as they're able to basically end any blighted, any sick individuals. For Asia, Japan is probably the only safe place with everyone who isn't in an island basically screwed. Australia and any oceanic nation is likely safe. Um, Africa is screwed and South America, no one asks, so it's probably fine. Considering that South America and this time would have likely been heavily Catholic, so because Catholicism would fall under this, I'd say it's safe. Probably. <laughs> no one is safe from the blight, just so you know. But with that, I'm going to basically end it off here. Those were just mainly my theories and just what I think is going to happen with, you know, the rest of the world. I want to kind of leave it a bit open-ended because I do want to hear about what you guys will think will happen to the rest of the world. Maybe Napoleon is still alive. Maybe Napoleon just never went to the battle to begin with, right? Um, is the U.S. going to get their zombie outbreak too? Will, will it be catastrophic? Will we probably get a map of it? Maybe. Or will that ship off the coast of Dover begin the fall of England? Or... Was it even the HMS Undaunted to begin with? Who knows? These were just my theories as to what I believe will concerning at least the articles and just the greater world a lot, uh, abroad. Uh, I just want to mention them and kind of talk about them. But obviously, I do want to hear from you guys. I want to hear your theories in the comment section below. Um, any as well as any comments, questions, concerns as well. That would be great. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry if I was a little bit all over the place. 
I did just want to get through all of this right now because the story is extremely interesting and just as well, you know, in addition is just also all over the place. So I kind of wanted to get a little bit of everything that I wanted to mention in. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Top Hacking and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.